Arab Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Earlier this afternoon, we mentioned to you how that the MiG-29 crashed into the Mediterranean Sea there uh, while trying to come back to the uh, the uh, flotilla, the, the aircraft carrier, Russian aircraft carrier, Admiral uh, Kuznets Kuznetsov uh, there, but they did not make it. The Russian military has now uh, reported, uh, that is the Russian Navy, that uh, the pilot was rescued. There was no harm done to him. And uh, so it's all well there. But uh, kind of taking you guys, I want to I want to kind of re uh, over look at a lot of things that we've uh, kind of been missing over here for the last couple of days. I've been more distracted with kind of looking at what's going on with the elections. And and for me, the election is not my strong point uh, in the first place. But I've kind of watched it more closely because of my concerns of war with Russia here in Europe and as well. Uh, I'm always in Israel uh, quite frequently there. Uh, and that's my home. That's my homeland is Israel. So that I'm always concerned about what's going on in Israel as far as the Syrian war and the different things that are going on there. Uh, so I want to kind of get back and let's, let's look at things that are going on because it, things are still heating up. Uh, you know, I, and, and I'm not here to fear monger. I know some people say that, oh, you're fear mongering. No, I, I try to give you the information to where maybe someone can make a difference in this. And I think the American people, they made the difference when they voted for Donald Trump. You know, I do have issues that I'm not very comfortable with about Donald Trump, but, I'm, but I do have an appreciation, though, that he wants to work with Russia. He wants to rebuild the economy for America. Um, there's, there's good things that this man wants to achieve. He also wants to stop uh, fighting against uh, Russia in the Middle East and help Russia to defeat ISIS. Uh, these are things that I'm very supportive of, and I appreciate this about uh, President-elect Donald Trump. And my biggest concern is, though, is that Obama might try to do something really radical before Donald Trump gets into office where these things could be changed. Um, at the same time, I'm going to be looking at, the, in the very near future, though, with you more about the New World Order and how that these things may have been planned all along from the beginning. And I know people may not want to hear that, but uh, even the fact that the European Union has been creating what they call a, uh, a world army over here, and no one could really understand why. Why do we need to replace NATO? Well, now Donald Trump's talking about pulling out of NATO. Maybe they knew that this was coming. We're going to go into that, but this isn't the time. Right now, let's take a look at other news that's going on. Britain uh, is set to deploy batteries of high-precision long-range missiles on Russia's border. They're actually going to Estonia. Uh, and these are very serious uh, ballistic missiles. We have not seen this, and this is bigger than during the time of the Cold War. Putting this type of ballistic, high-precision ballistic missiles there in Estonia there on Russia's border, friends, this is not good at all. We're talking about a gu guided multiple launch, excuse, excuse me, guided multiple launch rocket systems capable of destroying tanks within a 45-mile range will be lined up on Russia's border. Um, you know, it's not a nuclear missile, but they don't really need a nuclear missile. There's enough nuclear missiles in Germany and Romania already uh, that would take care of that. In fact, I saw photos earlier today of the MIM uh, 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 missile launcher systems over there in Romania today being set up as well, part of a, uh, uh, of a program that the United States was doing, a war game that they're doing over in Romania. So tensions are still very high here in Europe on Russia's border, even though Donald Trump is now the president-elect, and it seems to kind of cool things down a little bit. There's still a lot of tensions and a lot of stress. I don't think that we would see Russia try to do the first strike situation here. But if anything, you never know what could happen with NATO with their nerves being on edge uh, as it is. Um, moving right along, though, as I said, Obama certainly has not changed his mind and about what he's doing in his pledge to help NATO. Uh, the 3rd Armored Brigade Combat Team 4th Infantry Division has begun its movement to Europe, loading the first trains this week that will send heavy brigades worth of tanks, Bradley fighting vehicles, and other equipment overseas in support of Operation Atlantic Resolve. So Obama is going straight ahead. He is not backing down by building up more and more and more on Russia's border. You know, all it's going to take is one mistake. There's a lot of flights that are being done over the air there. Uh, even Vladimir Putin has asked NATO to use transponders. Uh, let's, let's keep from having a, a problem over the Baltic here. 
but NATO has refused. They're not going to use transponders. So all it's going to take is going to be a crash. Somebody's going to crash into the other. Something's going to happen. Missiles are going to fly, and this thing could really get out of control in a hurry. Uh, but I think that Putin is really trying his best to keep things low key, just as he has in, has in Syria. Uh, he did a uh, no-fly zone, no-bombing campaign over Aleppo and uh, the, the region there uh, around Aleppo for more than two weeks now and uh, trying to bring about a cessation of hostilities only to be repaid by the, uh, the Syrian, uh, the U.S.-backed rebels and, and the al-Nusra and al-Qaeda forces there. They have bombed civilians. They have used chemical weapons on the civilian populations in there. And of course, you know, they've, in times past, they've blamed all this on Bashar al-Assad and all these chemical weapons that have been blamed on Bashar al-Assad only to prove uh, by, by journalists such as Vanessa Bealey that have clearly shown that the chemical factory is actually in the hands of the U.S. backed rebels. So those that are making the chemical weapons and using the chemical weapons are the U.S. backed uh, groups that are in there and NATO groups that are backed by them as well. So uh, things are just very tense and, and the, speaking of tense there, another thing that kind of cropped up today and this is on the Syrian military uh, now, I don't think this is the Syria's military's official page. And this is where we had seen the other day they're going to burn alive. But as I looked at some of the posts that were on this particular page today on Twitter uh, at Syrian military, uh, I, I, I have a strong suspicion this is not an official uh, page for the Syrian military. So I want to make sure I correct that on there. Uh, I was very concerned about when I saw that they were going to burn the terrorists alive. And I just thought that that did not seem normal for the Syrian government to make that type of, of announcement. And then again, I've seen some other posts that were questionable that would be from the Syrian government. So I believe this is probably a, a private individual's uh, post here, but nonetheless, they're showing a photo here of the uh, R-33 missiles. And at first I thought, wow, they look, a little, look, look just a little bit too big to be R-33s. But if you look at the fin structures on these, and they say that they're in Latkia Air Base, that's the Russian um, uh, military air base there, uh, on the uh, west coast of Syria there, close to the Syri uh, excuse me, to the Mediterranean Sea. Um, that's where I get my twist up of words. I get too much going on in my mind. I, th I think I said it earlier, Syrian Sea or Syrian Ocean or something when I was speaking about the Mediterranean and the MiG-29 crashing in there. Too many words, too fast trying. i got to slow down, guys. Slow down, Steve. Anyway, so don't cross my words up there. Anyway. The R-33s, let me kind of give you an idea of what these look like here. This is a uh, picture of it here because when you look at the one here, it seems to be gigantic, but it's really not. Uh, the exact same structure, though, you got the same fin, same fin structures, the, the squares in the back, the long fins here. But the serious thing about these guys are what these, what these missiles are used for. Uh, if you look at it on the Russian uh, pages there, they talk about just being a precision-guided missile. But if you look at Wikipedia, Wikipedia actually, they call them AA-9 Amos as well. It's a long-range air-to-air missile developed by the uh, Vimpel. It is primary, Vimpel, by the way, is a, is a private company inside of Russia, arms company. It's primary armament of the MiG-31 interceptor intended to attack large high-speed targets such as the SR-71 Blackbird, the B-1 Lancer bomber, and the B-52 Stratfortress. Uh, Stratfortress. Why, why then has Russia got these types of weapons in Latkia? That would be my question. Why are they there? I believe that Russia has these type missiles there because Russia is still concerned that Obama may get involved once they begin their campaign to finally take Aleppo. You have to remember, it is a proxy war still between Russia and the United States and practically there's been many um, uh, many war specialists that have, that have spoke about this that this is a proxy war and it's obvious because the United States is backing uh, the, the, the rebels there, the Syrian rebels they, which have joined in with al-Nusra and al-Qaeda, they've all joined as one so basically the U.S. is backing all three groups now. Uh, different NATO members are backing different groups inside of Syria, all of them with the major intent and purpose to topple Bashar al-Assad. Okay, so that, that's what they're there for. And we know that as well, Kerry had already threatened that 
if they were to take and impose a no-fly zone over Syria, which they had talked about doing more than once, they would have to go in there and take out all of Russia's, uh, you know, S-300, S-400 uh, air defense systems there. And not only that, he said, then we would have to make sure we ground every plane. Well, does that mean grounding them by shooting them down, etc.? I think that Russia is concerned that they may get into an altercation with NATO even over Syria because they have been very intent on toppling Bashar al-Assad. Has Obama given up on Syria? I don't know. I don't think so because they continue to arm the Syrian opposition. Al-Nusra continues to get grad launchers, uh, grad missiles, etc. Heavier and heavier uh, military uh, power has come into the nation there to fight against Russia and the Syrian military. So I don't think they've given up on this as of yet. And I think that this is something that Russia is doing as a backup plan. They're going to arm their, their, uh, their, their, their uh, R-31s so that in the event they get into a war in the air, they've got some extra firepower. Don't say that America doesn't have it and NATO doesn't have it. Sure they do. They all have firepower. NATO has a lot more planes than Russia ever thought about having in that case. Uh, final closing in our, in our broadcast tonight here, something I thought was important that I wanted to bring up to your attention as well. It's on the Times of Israel. Israel to launch a major expedition to find Dead Sea Scrolls. Three-year bid to find more biblical manuscripts will begin next month, Israel's Antiquities authorities, Authority officials says. Uh, I think it's an incredible thing that they're doing, and I pray to God that they do it, and they do it quickly, because I... I'm very concerned that in the very near future, they're going to make Jerusalem an international city and it will be ran by the United Nations. In fact, I just got a message from Brother Kellen Davison, who is in Israel, uh, and he has said to me, I, he said, Steve, I have not seen this number of UN vehicles in and around the old city, never before as I am seeing now. Uh, and so, and I will, I will be back in Israel here in the next couple of weeks myself, God willing. Um, but I, I am concerned as well. When I start hearing things like this, we know it's coming. Uh, this is why when uh, President, uh, President-elect Donald Trump was talking about putting the embassy in Jerusalem, he caught so much flack from the Arabic community. 57 nations talking about boycotting, pulling out their, their ambassadors from the United States if he were to do that. They are majorly pushing this for this to be the New World Order capital, possibly. Uh, I know that there's been other uh, suggestions that the capital may be in other parts of the Middle East, um, but I think Jerusalem may end up being where they're going to put the capital at. So, very serious situation. It's where the Antichrist will try to rule from as well. So, I'm praying that Israel can get these scrolls because the last time the scrolls were discovered back in 1948-49, uh, in 47, even, I believe, as early as uh, dates that these scrolls were being discovered, we know that the Catholic Church got a hold of them all because back then it was still uh, largely under Palestinian uh, control or the Arabic control at that time. So the, the Catholic Church got those scrolls under even under British uh, uh, control there, and they were never able to get it, or Jordanian. You know, there's all, did, so many different nations are involved there. You know, the British, of course, we know in 1948 they pulled out. That's where we had the independence war. Not saying I don't understand the history. We know that the Jordanians fought uh, uh, along with Israel in order to be able to, to, to stop Israel from taking more, more of the land that belonged to the Jewish people. And then what happened is uh, that's how we ended up with the West Bank. That's from where the Jordanians fought. And we also lost Jerusalem in the War of Independence. It wasn't until 1967 that we took uh, Jerusalem uh, back in the fight there when all the Arabic nations come against Israel. And finally Israel took uh, the, the old city there. Uh, only to give up the Temple Mount back uh, to uh, the Palestinian, as they, as they call it today, the Palestinian Authority. They weren't the Palestinian Authority there. It was basically the Jordanians. And the Jordanians are still controlling it to this day. Uh, but they try to create a state within a state, which I'm not for that to begin with. So anyway, they are talking about doing this search here, and I don't know if they're going to get it done before things change. And of course, we already know that the Palestinians are also trying to take control of the scrolls as well. A lot of serious things going on. Anyway, friends, I know it's been a little bit lengthy of a news broadcast. I am about to do a special 
broadcast this evening uh, on a message that's on my heart that I wanted to share. And I'm thinking about uploading it here on Israeli News Live as well because people still have not recognized we have another channel called the Noon Institute. I may just load part of it here tonight and put the rest on the Noon Institute so those of you that want to be able to see these type messages can go to our new channel for that. I'm Stephen Benoon, watching.